This is the Mini Cooper S convertible and this is one of the best handling hatchbacks apparently for sale in the market. It comes with a 2 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder engine that sounds like Sounds like money It makes 190 horsepower and upwards of 250 newton meters of torque And in this canyon, this is a hoot to drive Here is the revolutionary Morris Mini Mine. The engine is mounted across the car so that it can take four people in comfort with all their luggage. When the Mini came out, it was a revolutionary vehicle. Its front wheel drive layout which gave the designers 80% of the car remaining to use as a passenger area was an absolutely revolutionary design back in the late 1950s. In fact, this was so revolutionary, it influenced and changed the way affordable passenger cars were designed after the Morris Mini. So your modern city hatchback like your Suzuki Swifts and Hyundai i20s all use the same basic drivetrain layout invented by Mini back in the 1950s. But ever since BMW acquired Mini, the role of the Mini Cooper has changed quite a lot. In the early days, it was an icon of affordable and economical travel for the masses. But ever since the 2000s, it has become more of a fashion statement. Tons and tons of Hollywood and Bollywood celebrities have owned this car. Everyone from Madonna to even Deepika Padukone have owned it. The pops, the bangs, the farts, the exhaust is a stock exhaust if you can't believe it. And you can get an upgraded JCW exhaust for this car. How insane is that? The exhaust is roaring. I'm in the mountains. Can this get any better? Well, unfortunately, it can. Because the thing is, since this is the convertible, This thing has lost quite a lot of rigidity. So when you're going around corners, you can feel it. You can feel the car wobbling around here and there. And these tires also don't help. These are the hand-cooked tires which have been fitted from the factory. And they're of no good use. There's no traction when I need it. And yeah, I mean, it's not as great as people seem to say it is. But I'm pretty sure that the coupe version of this car handles much better than this because I can feel the potential in this chassis but since the roof isn't there it's going a little wobbly in my opinion the car gets three different driving modes green mid and sport green and mid are more towards the city driving style the throttle pedal is very numb the steering is very numb and overall the car does not give the type of feedback that you want during spirited driving. But once you flick it into sports mode, everything becomes much tighter and much more communicative. The throttle pedal becomes as sharp as a butcher's knife. The steering becomes much more responsive and overall the car feels like it wants to go fast. This thing is an epic little car to drive in the canyons. But let's talk about the looks for a second. Up front, it's a classic mini design. You have the round headlights, angry little grills up front, but there's still a little bit of fakery going on. Over here, this intake, it's not real. But I can totally understand why they've put it here, probably for the JCW model or even the GP model. Come down to the side, since it's a convertible, you have the soft top folding mechanism and everything, and it's a very coupe-esque roof line. And onto the back, the taillights have a little cool characteristics in them where they actually have the flag of Britain in their design. So that actually looks quite cool. And again at the back, you have the dual exhaust pipes, and like you saw right now, they sound absolutely insane when you're hooning them. 
But the thing is, I don't think this Cooper S convertible is meant for canyons like this. Even if it's a great car to drive in the canyons, the handling is amazing, it sounds amazing. This is more of a fashion statement and an accessory type of vehicle rather than a car made to attack these type of roads. I think so this is the optimum situation for a Mini Cooper S convertible. Even though it can handle like a proper go-kart and it's a very fun car to drive in the twisties, this is the optimum situation for this car. It's to cruise around town, it's to show off a little bit, it's to show that you have a stylish and luxurious life. It's more of a fashion accessory than a proper track weapon or a tool to attack B-roads. It's just to go with the top down, 7th gear and cruise around town and when it comes to the sound of the Mini Cooper S convertible pop down a few gears, give it half throttle and upshift at 4000 rpm it gives nice turbo whistles and the pops and the bangs of this exhaust are also epic thing is the Cooper S convertible is a great car to drive in the canyons but I would rather prefer to poodle around town here and there, go to parties, go to nice restaurants with the top down, wear nice clothes like this and just show off a little bit. That's what the main purpose for this car is. But that's not to say that this is a boring car. But I think so the Cooper S convertible is more about the glamour and more about the pantomime rather than the driving experience of it. The Cooper S is one of those cars that changes its purpose depending on what variant you buy. Buy the coupe and you have one of the best handling hatchbacks around. Buy the convertible and you got a swanky ride that makes a stylish statement. Either way, the Cooper was a different experience altogether. The subtle nods to its British heritage, the amazing exhaust note, the styling and handling make it into a package unlike any other.